Okay. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening for our monthly Sky Watchers program. Some of you are regulars, so you know we have this is a monthly programming series. It's a collaboration between multiple different agencies, the Park District and the Park Foundation and the Chagrin Valley Astronomical Society, uh, the Geauga County Libraries and the Burton Library. So we all get together to host monthly programming series. Um, a few things before we get started. I did want to let you know on the table to the right over there, there's various handouts, uh, uh, astronomy related handouts that Jonathan is showcasing for us over there. So feel free to help yourself to any of those and any of the items on there you can check out and you can return those at any Clevenet library so you don't have to come back here to return them. And then on the back wall behind you, um, I have some things we've discarded from our collection recently, astronomy related books. Those are free for you to just keep forever. So you can take those home and keep them. And then um, over there, you'll see we have a telescope. You can check out telescopes at any of the Geauga County libraries. There is a short telescope quiz on our website. You go on there, you watch a little video, and you take the quiz, and they add a note to your card. And then you can check out a telescope in any one of our branches. And also, just so you're aware, we do record these, and they're on the Geauga Skywatchers YouTube channel. So you can go back and watch this one and any of the other ones from the past. So next month, our program is going to be, I believe it's at the Middlefield branch. So next month, it's going to be Sun 101, and that is on June 6th. And there is a flyer over there about that, so if you, you don't have to try and retain that information. But so there's, that's June 6th at the Middlefield branch, and that one will be about the sun. This month, we have Gus Cycli from the Chagrin Valley Astronomical Society, and he is going to talk to us today about comets. So thank you, Gus, for joining us today, and I look forward to learning all about that. And there is your microphone. Thank you, Amy. And thank you, folks, for coming out on this uh, blizzardy day. <laughs> for once, not in short, now. So, um, yeah, Marty, I'm going to log out of this. This was just a little uh, introduction as to what uh, the programs that we share uh, with the library. Now, this uh, program comes to you with, from the Chagrin Valley Astronomical Society. Marty and I members have been members for years, and, uh, and the topic is comets. The, uh, let me see if this can take the, this is good enough. Can you see it? Enough of this? If you go there from, from oh. the beginning, upper left corner. Uh, upper left. Upper left. Okay, look again, look again, look again. It's on, it's on the white box. It's underneath the fire. Oh, oh, right, right. Oh, right here, right here. There you go. Good. Now that's better. This picture is actually from my backyard. And it was in April of uh, 2020, in the, the, the heat of the pandemic, and uh, you couldn't go anywhere. But this this thing showed up in our backyard. Had had to be up though around four o'clock in the morning, and uh, put the camera on a tripod and and um, face the north northeast for about. Uh, eight, ten seconds, and this is what showed up. It's, uh, this is Comet Neowise that was with us for about a month that summer. Uh, actually, more than a month. And uh, as you can see, just to, we'll, we'll describe some of this in, in a minute, but uh, if you can see, look very closely, you might be able to see, you'll see the coma, that's the bright uh, pick, uh, part of it on the bottom, and then the the tail, like the, the uh, majority of the tail, as you can see the the wider part, go, and then there's also a fainter one to the left uh, that's uh, bluish in color. Trust me, but you can't see it too well, but that's that's what it is. If you see pictures from that of uh, the Hubble, for example, or some of the bigger telescopes, you would, you would be able to make, make that up. So uh, this is what 
we're going to be talking about, not just this one, but this is a, a, the best uh, comet we've had here, by the way, and about since the, since the mid-90s, at the time we had one that's uh, called Hale Bob. Some of you may remember that. And it uh, was, you could see that during the, the day, daytime, before the sun rises, but uh, you could see it with the naked eye. That was an awesome, awesome thing to, to experience in those days. So, uh, so what is a comet? Uh, let's see. Uh, this is a definition uh, from NASA, the experts on, on these. And it's basically a frozen leftover from the formation of the solar system composed of dust, rock, and ice. Now, this thing, if, if you were to to walk in, in the door with a ball of, say, this big with this kind of, your mother would not, not let you in the house. You know. But you'd send it up in the, in the, uh, uh, in the sky or in, in space, and that's what it turns out to be. We'll find out why that is the, the case. And uh, so where do these things come from? This is... Uh, this is a depiction of the uh, solar uh, system as we, that, that we're part of. In the middle, of course, is the sun, the planets around, and there are a couple of belts that you, you know, this belt right here is called the asteroid belt, and this belt out here is called the Kuiper belt, and then this, uh, there's another uh, part of the solar system we'll talk about uh, a little bit later. But uh, the, the asteroid belt, you've, you've heard of ast uh, asteroids coming through our, system, our solar system. Some of them come close to the Earth. Some of them come very close to the Earth. And then, of course, the doomsday scenarios yeah, all over the place, you know. And, uh, and, but uh, uh, not, this is not where most of the comets come from. They come from the, uh, the uh, Kuiper belt, and then there's another uh, one I'll mention in a minute called the Oort cloud. But these, the, uh, the Kuiper belt right here, are what produces the, what they call the short uh, period comets. These are comets that uh, the period refers to their um, visits to, uh, to our part of the solar system. Uh, any, anywhere from 20 to 200 years, those usually come from this Kuiper belt. And uh, what makes these uh, 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 comets uh, kind of leave the Kuiper belt is usually disturbance, gravitational disturbance in, the, in, the, uh, uh, in their orbit caused by the big planets that we have, Neptune, Jupiter, and Uranus, and the others, and Saturn certainly. And uh, the, uh, the other source of the, uh, by the way, the Kuiper belt was discovered, as you may guess, by, by an astronomer called uh, Gerard Kuiper. And he, uh, um, he didn't actually uh, see uh, the, uh, through telescopes much of that, but he speculated in a, in a uh, scientific letter uh, that he published uh, of this existence, and that proved to be so with uh, uh, more technology improvements uh, that followed. The, uh, the other, uh, and this, this uh, short, by the way, uh, a, an example of that, Halley's Comet, some of you may remember, well, maybe not all of you, in the 80s, you remember uh, we, there was uh, its last visit over here, it comes around every 86 years, it was it wasn't much of a uh, you can say it was a dud really the, the, this last visit here, but that is a very uh, a very famous uh, comet that produces uh, uh, quite a few meteors, which we'll be talking about me meteors uh, later. Uh, so that is that's the one source of the um, of the of the comets as the Kuiper belt, and the. Uh, the next one will be the Oort cloud. 
and the cloud is uh, is more of uh, of a sphere that envelops the uh, the solar system. And to, to, uh, so far, um, the the scientists have not really um, they still classify it as as a theory more than an actual physical thing that they they can point to. That, that there is a cloud that surrounds the solar system, and that cloud produces comets that they, they call them the long period uh, comets, and these are uh, comets that the one that you saw earlier that come around here once every uh, 6,000 years, that one that you just showed you, 6,700 years before it comes back. And uh, so these, these are the sources of where the, where the comets come from. Um, now the size, and this is by the way, the picture of the, of the Oort cloud. Um, as I said, no one's seen it, but this is what they theorize it looks like. Okay. Now, uh, the size of this, to this cloud, from the, and these are all estimates, are 2,000 to 100,000 AUs, the astronomical units. It's a basic measurement in astronomy. It is uh, the distance between the sun and the earth. It's 90, that's the three, 93 uh, million miles. So you can tell by multiplying uh, these numbers by that, by the an AU, and tell you the size of the Oort cloud. It's a quite a quite a massive uh, part of the, the solar system, and uh, and when you're talking, of course, about these kinds of uh, of uh, objects in the in the universe, uh, 2,000, 100,000 astronomical units is uh, is really not much when you consider Neptune is uh, like 2.8 billion miles away. So uh, that's. Uh, that is a, um, a, a very small uh, portion of uh, of the universe, especially when some of the some our galaxy is a uh, hundred thousand uh, light years in diameter, and uh, some our nearest galaxy is two and a half million light years. So you you can tell this is massive. But not in the in the uh, uh, scale of, of the uh, galaxy of the uh, universe. The Oort, by the way, is named after a Dutch, a Dutch astronomer. His name, his name is Jan Oort, and uh, you can Google him online if you want to know more more about him. Obviously, he's he's very uh, influential in in uh, uh, the the finding this uh, particular aspect of our uh, our solar system, and this is the the 93 million miles that makes up the AU, and then the short period comets, as I mentioned to you, is uh, the uh, comets that uh, uh, come around uh, within 20 to 200 years, and the long period ones come um, thousands of years before they come around. Now, uh, so how fast do comets travel? Now, uh, when, you're, uh, when you're looking at that, the, the picture that I showed you, uh, it doesn't really, you, you can see it if you take pictures even on the same night, an hour after hour, you can see it moving. You, and then you put them in a series, you can see the movement and those, and those things. And they're traveling at about two two thousand miles per hour. That's you know, pretty pretty fast. Uh, but uh, when you not as fast, for example, as uh, as the uh, space station or some of the satellites that we have, they're going about seventeen thousand miles an hour. So this is this is going uh, two thousand miles an hour. But as it gets closer to to the sun. The, the gravity of the sun pulls it to, and it, it speeds up to about 100,000 miles per hour. And um, I th I'm going to try here um, during this uh, presentation to show you 
where, uh, by the way, this, this is a 28 uh, minute presentation. I'll wait till later to see how, how you folks are, are feeling and uh, if you're up to uh, watch that. But uh, so uh, the uh, next, uh, this is, let me see what, where this takes us. Hold on, please. I think I'll go to the next one. This, by the way, is the is the uh, uh, another shot of the same comet, but this is from the northwest. And uh, a few a few few weeks after that shot, this it moved to the northwest, and uh, and you can see it. Uh, uh, these it, it was a very warm evening, and you see all of these. Uh, lights right here these are mainly fireflies they uh, they were in the air all over and you couldn't stop uh, stop it so i included it in the picture there's there's some ways to, to clean that but i thought it'd be a nice nice thing so it's uh this lasted for a couple of weeks in that in that region uh before it uh, got closer and closer to the sun so the next phase of of the comets i'd like to talk to you about are comets and meteor showers. Uh, they are the source of the meteor showers that we enjoy uh, uh, several times, almost every month of the year, do you have some uh, meteor shower coming up. The, the most famous and uh, prolific ones that uh, we have would be uh, Halley's Comet uh, and also uh, that, that produces actually the, some of the, uh, uh, these meteor showers. And uh, some other swift tuttle, for example, is, uh, is the one I believe is the one that, that produces uh, the, uh, uh, the Perseids uh, meteor showers in, in August, at, um, second weekend usually in August. And this picture right here is, uh, I was, out again in my backyard with the camera wide open uh, to uh, I don't really remember exactly what I was trying to photograph at that moment but later in, in looking at the at the results and I see this and this is what what a uh, uh, what the, the comet actually uh, produces as it passes through our area they leave behind uh, a, a circle or a, a debris around the, this, uh, the sun. And that, that, that debris continues to uh, circle for infinity, I suppose. Uh, and in the meantime, we circle through that every single, every single year. And the debris that uh, we encounter is burnt through in our atmos atmosphere in the form of meteors, meteor showers. And this is what they look like. Uh, some of them are more spectacular. Some they call them uh, the big uh, uh, fire, uh, uh, Marty, the big, uh, big, uh, uh, yeah, of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, they, they're usually a little bigger and they, they do get much more uh, uh, get very bright, brighter. Now this over here, I'll show you depiction of that. It's your home. Excuse the, the, the commercial. I couldn't get the thing out of the. Now this is what usually, if uh, this is a, an animation, it's not real, but this is how uh, when, when you take pictures of those and then you can stack them together, you can see how prolific those, uh, those uh, meteor showers are. You don't have it there, do you? Oh, I'm looking at it here. Well, I, let, me, let me move on to, I tell you what, I'll, I'll skip this, I'll skip this one. That's all right. Okay. There's a, yeah. Uh, so uh, 
these are, this is a, uh, the meteor, ex description of a meteor shower is when the Earth passes through the tail of debris left by a comet or asteroid. And uh, we, uh, by the way, there is, uh, there's one, as we speak, if you're um, amenable to getting up uh, early in the mornings, look to the east, a clear morning, hopefully, and uh, there will be uh, low in the horizon, um, a meteor shower called uh, uh, Eta. This is reference to a star. That's the way the Eta Aquarid. This is part of the Aquarius constellation. And uh, there is a meteor shower that uh, we're going through right now. But you have to see him, see him in the morning. And be, uh, be very patient. And uh, it's not that cold anymore. So I have no excuse on that. Also, by the way, there is a uh, there is a uh, comet uh, that is visible in the uh, western sky these days. Um, uh, Mercury, uh, about uh, maybe a half hour to an hour after sunset, is uh, very visible in the western sky. It's maybe about uh, 10 degrees up. To uh, to its right now, as you're looking at it, it would be to its right. And a little below is a, uh, a comet. Um, it's not too far from, from there. I will show you. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to get Stellarium out. This is a program that we use for this, where I'll show you uh, where it would be if you're interested in, in, uh, in seeing that. So uh, OK, no, this, there it is. So this is a depiction of what we we're saying. This is, uh, you, you see, this is a comet Ison. And by the way, these comets are often named after organizations. I, uh, you have to look it up to see what Ison stands for. But this is, there's another uh, um, a group that called NEOWISE, N-E-O-W-I-S-E. -S so the acronyms of these groups that, that actually look for comets all the time, and they give them numbers. Uh, uh, and uh, comets slash 2019, for example, and they give it a designation that uh, you can identify it with. But this is what we were talking about earlier, where the ice sound leaves that debris, and the Earth goes through that, and it produces the, meteor, the meteors. OK, so. All right, so this is the end of, uh, of the, my presentation. Now, but before we, we let you go, now if you have any questions, you know, please feel, this is a good time to ask questions if you have any. Do you? Okay, well, uh, let me ask you, have you ever uh, gone outside and experienced astronomy and in any way other than program like this? Have you? It's, yeah? So the backyard and, uh, and you've seen? We went camping and we, brought, we actually brought a telescope, I think. Oh, did you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so for, for comets, you will need, uh, you will need a telescope, small telescope like this, maybe binoculars and uh, but better yet, if you uh, can uh, uh, get a high-powered telescope, and then you'll be able to see more of its of its features. The uh, the head of a uh, of the uh, like this this uh, uh, head of the uh, comet. Usually, the reason you see it here is because it has a coma, the debris that is that's been frozen for millions and millions of years as it. Uh, gets closer to the sun, it starts to melt and uh, peel off. And then initially it'll form a coma, uh, a halo around, uh, around the, uh, the head that uh, makes it visible to us this far away. And then as, the, as it gets closer to the sun, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, sun uh, starts to push uh, away the sun, wind uh, of the uh, solar that is expelled by, by the sun, 
pushes the uh, the particles away and then creates the uh, the uh, tail that you that you see over here. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna try and go to see if I can get uh, Stellarium out. Yeah, it's working. That's good. This is a free app, by the way. Take advantage of it before they start charging. It's really, <coughs> it's free. You can download it. And uh, this is, right now, it's looking to the, uh, to the west. They can tell right down here. Tells you the, uh, uh, the azimuth. Uh, this is starting from the north and then going to the to the right to the, to the east and coming down the circle that it forms that gives you shows it to you by by the degrees and uh, I'm going to get rid of the ground and in, in the case of this I think I'll drop it down a little bit maybe go a little bit and watch this I'm gonna get the clock running I'm gonna speed up the movement of the the system. See how it's good. And watch it get darker. Have you seen now? Uh, start seeing Mercury. Watch this also. And you can bring it close and close to, you know, quite a bit close. If you were looking at Jupiter, I, I'm sorry. Oh, well, that that is uh, that's a satellite. It's uh, I'm not seeing it right now, but uh, now the the moon, of course, this is showing you the movement that's going on. Now everything is moving, right? We're moving. The planets are moving. Everything is moving, and then so this will show you what is what is moving. And as you get closer to this, you see the speed a little more uh, uh, pronounced. Now, this, by the way, are the Pleiades, the seven sisters. And this is as it, as things get darker. Uh, leaving here tonight, if it's clear, take a look to the to the west. Um, not while you're driving, by the way. So. <laughs> now. The, the comet, the comet I, I was going to show you where the comet is. Now, sometimes, there oh, is. there it is. See it? See the comet okay. right up here? Right okay. Yeah, this is where the comet is. Uh, right now, here's, you click on that, and it tells you the uh, specifications about it. For example, it will tell you here that it is magnitude 6.2. This is the magnitudes that are used, by the way, are the, what you can see with your eye, magnitude 5 or, or under, uh, more or less. Uh, the, some very fortunate people can may see 6, but mainly it's uh, 5 or under is what, what we can see with the, with the naked eye. So with something like this, you'll need some help, a te telescope or binoculars, um, especially if you have binoculars on, on a tripod so you can reduce the shaking, you know, that, uh, that uh, happens when you're looking at that. So this is, this is, the, uh, this is one of those comets that is, that is really, really, yeah, see this thing moving next, next to it? Let's see. Uh, that's satellite. I thought maybe it would be uh, this, uh, this station, but it's not. So, and as as this thing starts to uh, develop a tail, they'll show you a tail uh, on here. So this is this is a uh, what's happening right now out out there. So uh, it would be about nine o'clock, by the way, 21 hours the 
the hours here are in uh, 24 hour uh, days. Now let me go to the to the morning. We'll go to the east here. See what was going on in the morning here. And then we'll go back to, let's see what's going to happen tomorrow. Okay. This is 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay. See here, the universe at, at your fingertips. Oh, that's, okay, there's, here's another thing is in the morning, by the way, these days. Look at this. If you have a clear view of the eastern sky, you will see Saturn, Mars, Jupiter, and Venus all in a line right here. And uh, there's also Neptune but you can't see it too well because Neptune is, uh, is a very faint very faint uh, object for us. It's uh, very far. But there's also a minor planet called Vesta. There are a group of planets, by the way. These kind of escaped the asteroid belt years ago and they uh, uh, have been uh, going around the uh, the, so, the, the with the rest of these uh, planets. So they call them minor planets. And uh, so, uh, let's see. Uh, so this, by the way, is, uh, you've heard the, the term ecliptic. That's the band through which the, all of the planets travel around the sun, more or less. And this is, gives you an idea where the ecliptic is. If you draw a line, and it is, uh, it is at, a, at this angle to the, to the, uh, to the horizon. You know. And if you go at different parts of the globe, up or down the latitude, this angle will change. So, now, what I wanted to show you also, now this is the Eta Aquarius. You see it right here? This is the, another source of uh, meteors uh, in, the, uh, in the morning. This, uh, you should be able to see about that time, maybe a dozen or so uh, uh, meteor uh, meteors uh, going through, through the atmosphere. And that's, that is in the morning. This alignment, by the way, uh, will be so for quite a few days. Uh, and then let's see when will the moon join them. Watch this. Uh, it's going away. It's not going to be for a while. It will be joining Mercury uh, in few uh, in few days. So try using this, by the way, if you if you have a chance. Uh, it's easy to download and it's free. And uh, so uh, that is the gist of my presentation today. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, we um, have. What is the name of this again? Stellarium. I, I'll write it for you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there are others out there, but this is the most uh, used. That you know. In fact, this is also you can connect it to uh, to a telescope mount and then use this program to control the, the mount and to uh, direct it to the to places in the in the sky that you want to see. Yeah. And, uh, so a little earlier than you thought, but it's <laughs> what Marty told me, uh, put some more slides in there. <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> but, uh,
by the way, I should uh, maybe put a uh, plug for our for our club. We uh, we partner with the with the Jaw County Park District with the, in their observatory park. Uh, look at their at their schedule and see when. Uh, in fact, every third third Saturday of every month, you'll see Marty. Sometimes myself and. Uh, th three or four uh, other members. We run the big telescope that they have, the 36-inch telescope. Yeah, that's, uh, they bought that off, uh, you know, off the hands of case, and they fix it, but thanks to to uh, uh, Heidi's group uh, uh, foundation, uh, over a million, million and a half dollars raised to fix that thing, and it's, uh, it's a jewel in this county. Use it. So, uh, and then uh, we also partner with them uh, for other other events. But they're they're on their on their website. Uh, these are observ observed. Oh, I should tell you. Uh, on the fifteenth of this month, the the lunar eclipse. The lunar eclipse. In fact, let me give you a preview. The lunar eclipse is going to look like. Let's go over here and get the moon. Now it's going to look a lot better in real life, by the way. And uh, let's go to the 15th. Okay. Now let's go to 10 o'clock night 9 10 All right, let's see uh, okay watch what's going to start happening this is 10 I'm going to bring them one a little closer. It is actually happening now. Let me move it an hour. Go back an hour. You see this? See this lower limb right here? It's getting dark. That it is moving in the shadow of the earth. And this will, I'm going to have to give it like this so that it doesn't move out too far. And this will continue to move into the shadow of the of the earth and it will stay there for a long time see how long. and it will eventually disappear Yeah, that's 11. And then it'll disappear till about 1 o'clock. So you'll have plenty of time to take pictures and to study the, the colors. We have a little experiment that uh, uh, we're going to try in the club uh, to see how uh, how bright it is there's a way to measure that see how bright in uh, relation to a couple of nearby stars uh, one of them is right here in uh, Scorpius Antar Antares and uh, we're going to compare the magnitude of the moon when it's 
uh, totally dark to this and another star nearby. So that's what's going on in the sky in the near future. Uh, maybe too early to tell you, but two years from, well, from, last, uh, from April 8th, we're going to have a, a total solar eclipse going right over us here. So keep an eye, put that on your, on your calendar. And do, don't do like I did and uh, uh, wasn't underneath that uh, and the 2017 one. And Marty was. He can tell you about that. Have you showed them your program on that? Um, yes. Okay, so it's a, it's a wonderful experience to have once in a lifetime. Although it happens, this solar eclipse happens once or somewhere on this Earth once every 18 months. Uh, but uh, coming over us uh, with this intensity is, I don't know how often that happens. But. So again, that's my program for you tonight. You get it, Heidi?